Hello and welcome to Getting Started with Kaminda Optimize. I am Helena, I'm one of the Optimize developers and I will be your Optimize guide for today. Now, this video aims to give you an introduction to Kaminda Optimize. I will teach you how to set up a simple Optimize demo environment and together we will then use Optimize to analyze our data and generate some interesting insights. Namely, we will look into what our friend Lafayette, who you probably already know from the other tutorials, has been up to. Should he maybe be taking fewer taxis? How often has he died? And most importantly, what takes longer, organizing a funeral or overthrowing the monarchy? But first, the boring stuff. I need you to make sure that you fulfill the following prerequisites. You need to have Java 11. You should also make sure that the platform is already up and running. If you've already completed the other tutorials, you can use the results of those. If not, please follow the link in the description on how to get started with the platform. And lastly, you will also be needing an enterprise trial license because Optimize is an enterprise exclusive product. If you don't have one of those yet, do not worry. You can easily request one from our website. Simply go over here. We will also have the link for this in the description. You put in your details and then we will be sending you an email that has both a 30 day trial license as well as your login credentials, which you'll be needing later to download Optimize. At this point of the video, um, I know you probably all have one burning question that you are too afraid to ask. What is Optimize? Well, Optimize, right over here, is an extension to a Commander platform for enterprise customers. It can provide you with continuous monitoring and insights about your deployed business processes, thereby helping you to make informed decisions about how to, you guessed it, optimize your processes. Um, more specifically, Optimize pulls data from the platform using a dedicated REST API. This data is then imported and stored in Optimize's own Elasticsearch instance. And once imported, Optimize uses the complex analytical algorithms our very smart developers have come up with to create all sorts of exciting reports and analytics on this data to answer your business questions. And without further ado, Let's get started with setting up Optimize. You can find everything you need on our enterprise download page. You can also find a link for this in the video description. Now, if you go to the Optimize section, you can see that there are two different distributions. We have the demo distribution and we also have the production distribution. Now, the production distribution is intended to be used in your production environment with an existing Elasticsearch setup. It contains all the required files to start up Optimize, but you do need to configure it to connect to your pre-installed Elasticsearch instance. The demo distribution, on the other hand, is the one that comes with both Elasticsearch and Optimize, making it the easier choice if you just want to quickly get to know the Optimize features. And in our case, this is the right one for us to choose. You can download either one of these. I'm going to choose the zip. And next up, I will be asked to confirm my login credentials. Now, these are the credentials that you received in the email from us with the trial license. And if you have confirmed them correctly, the optimized download should start automatically. Once you have downloaded and extracted the optimized distribution, this is what we are looking at. Uh, you can find all essential configurations in this folder up here, and you can set them by editing the environment config file. For instance, this is where you could set a different port for your platform connection, stuff like that. However, for the purpose of this tutorial, we will just be using the default config, so we don't need to touch any of this. Before continuing, please make sure that you have the Commando platform already up and running. If not, please pause this video and follow one of our other tutorials on how to get started with the platform. Now, once everything is prepared, we can start Optimize. There are two different ways of doing this. We have the Optimize Startup script and we have one script called Optimize Demo. Now, the Optimize Startup script is the one that starts only Optimize and not Elasticsearch. 
This is useful if you want to connect to your own Elasticsearch instance. However, this connection needs to be configured in the environment config file I showed you before you start Optimize. The demo script, on the other hand, starts both Elasticsearch and Optimize, which is what we will be doing today. Now, because, as I just said, this script starts Elasticsearch and Optimize, it may take a little bit longer because Optimize is waiting for Elasticsearch to become available before it can start up. You can see that in the logs right here. So right now we're waiting for Elasticsearch to start. And once we can reach Elasticsearch, Optimize will also start. There you go. Optimize is now starting. Now we're waiting for it to become available. Once Optimize has started, we can go to localhost 8090, where we will be asked to provide our license. This is the trial license that you received in your email before. We can just simply copy paste that in here and submit. And then we can go to the login page where we will log in with the credentials demo and the password demo. And if, like me, you are starting Optimize for the first time, you will see a friendly What's New dialog informing you about the newest Optimize features. And here we are. We have successfully started and logged into Optimize. But as you can see, we don't have anything created yet. So why not start by creating our very first report? We can do so with the create new process report option right here. And I would like to evaluate data from our Lafayette process. I would also like to see data from all versions in my report. And specifically, I think I would be interested in knowing how many times we've actually managed to overthrow the monarchy versus, for example, how many times we've had to plan Lafayette's funeral. Now, to answer this question, we could build a report from scratch or we could use one of our handy report templates. And in this case, I think the user task count report is the one that suits our needs the best. So let's create one of those. After creating the new report, we are automatically forwarded to the report builder where we can edit the report to our liking. And currently, as you can see, our data is visualized in a table. We have all of our user tasks in the process right here. And next to that, we have the count of how many times each user task was evaluated, as well as the relative frequency. That is basically what the report setup section over here defines. We have the user task view, which we are measuring by the user task count, and all of that is grouped by user tasks. Now, if you were to change the visualization to something like, for example, a bar chart, you can see that the measure part, the user task count, is what we always plot over here on the y-axis, whereas the group by part, group by user tasks, is what is plotted down here on the x-axis. But I think in this case, I would quite like to visualize my data with a heat map because I think that, that makes it very easy for me to just kind of quickly visually compare the results. Now up here, we also have the data source section where you can add a new data source and you can also edit the existing ones. In this case, I think I'm quite happy with this as is. And the last section I would like to talk about is the filter section down here. This is where you can refine your results. Quite often, your data might include information that you don't necessarily want or need to see in your report. In this case, I can see two bright red spots in my heat map. This one over here is the overthrowing the monarchy one. That's actually quite interesting. But the other one, the prepare for departure node, that is one, as you can see from the model, all instances have to go through, right? No matter where Lafayette ends up going, um, we always have to prepare for departures. So it's not actually that interesting that a lot of instances pass through this node. And I actually find it a little bit distracting from the results over here that are the interesting ones. This is why I would like to add a flow node filter. Namely, I'm going to add a flow node selection filter. 
This filter allows me to deselect the prepare for departure note. I can add this filter. And as you can see, the filter has excluded the results from this node specifically from the report, which means I'm no longer distracted by the bright red spot over here and I can focus on the things that actually matter. Now we can edit the name of our report and lastly, save it. And there we go. We have created our very first user task account report. One of the great things about Optimize is that it continuously imports live data from the platform. Right now, we are evaluating data from 13 instances. You can see that right up here. And as you can see in the heat map, we have managed to overthrow the monarchy 11 times. Now, I personally think that, that is not enough. I would like to overthrow the monarchy at least 12 times. To do so, let's switch over to task list and start a new instance in our Lafayette process. I'm going to prepare for departure. I will take some money and I would like to go to America. There you go. Now let's switch back to optimize and see what is happening. In the lower left-hand corner of Optimize, you can see two indicators. The first one is for your Elasticsearch connection. You can see that Elasticsearch is currently connected, which is good. And the one right next to it is for your engine connection. Now, my engine is named Camunda BPM. And when you can see that little loading indicator, that means Optimize is currently importing new data from the platform. Once it has finished importing this data, we can refresh the report. And we can see that we are now evaluating data from 14 instances. And most importantly, we have managed to overthrow the monarchy 12 times, which is much better than 11. Now, I would like to create an overview where we can compare the results of our new report with some other interesting findings. We can do this with a new dashboard. Now, we could choose from one of our dashboard templates, but I think in this case, a blank dashboard will do. So let's create that. We are forwarded to the dashboard builder. As you can see, we don't have anything on our dashboard yet, but we can change that by adding a new report. Now, let's add the report that we just built, the user task count report. I can drop that wherever I want. I'm going to drop it over here and I can also make it a little bit larger just so that it's easier to read. And right next to that, I would like to put a report that I have prepared. This is a user task duration report. It's very similar to the user task count report, just instead of evaluating the count of how many times each user task was evaluated, we are evaluating the duration um, that it took on average to complete a user task. We can save this and we now have a very nice overview of our data, which we can even set to automatically refresh at a set interval. Now, this dashboard allows me to compare the data we've collected from the platform and comparing these heat maps, I can see that even though we didn't plan Lafayette's funeral very often, we only did that two times, it still seems to be that this is the task that we, on average, spend the most time on if we do execute it. Even overthrowing the monarchy, on average, seems to take less time. Now, this insight that there is a potential bottleneck right here in the funeral task is something that we should definitely take into account when improving our process, especially since planning Lafayette's funeral is probably nowhere near as fun as overthrowing the monarchy. I think we should aim to not spend any more time on it than necessary. Optimize offers a whole lot more than what I had time for in this short getting started guide. Next to the dashboards and the reports, you may also find the outlier and branch analysis features very useful to generate deeper insights into your data. I would also like to greatly encourage you to try out for yourself. For example, you could try to create a report which analyzes the entire process instance duration, depending on which destination Lafayette actually chooses to travel to. But alas, we have reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And for now, it is goodbye from Optimize. 
and goodbye from me. Goodbye.